Hey, great day, everybody. Happy May. Welcome to another incredible episode of the Jim Gale Show. I'm Matthew Britt coming at you from Ontario, Canada. Great to be here. Excited for another awesome month just getting underway and the new life and growth of spring. You can feel the energy in the air. Uh, but first, as always, my good friend, business partner, inspiration, Mr. Jim Gale. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, thank you, Matthew. The last few days, like this last few years, have been just incredible. Um, and I want to share one piece of this just to get you all thinking about how permaculture design will change the world, starting in your own backyard. So we met and look at my little, my little girl. Oh, shoot. My oh. little girl came to say hi. Oh. <laughs> Aww. There's our motivation the right there. It's on the and the doggy. <laughs> oh. I love it. Come on. I love you. Um, so you're amazing. So um I was in um, Victoria, Texas with uh I was invited by General Blaine Holt and Nick Smoot to be in a, a big think conference with these world changers. Like one of the ladies, Susan, sold her company for $3 billion. Another guy is one of the world's leading aerospace and space scientists. And so we had this incredible talk. I shared about how we help people grow food without poisons, how that's a foundational, fundamental aspect of freedom for humanity. And everybody got very excited about it. And then, Yesterday morning, I was invited to a food bank, and I met um, the woman's name is um, Cadell. Her last name is Cadell, and um, Robin Cadell, amazing woman. And she's got seven acres of grass, and she's like, I not only want to help people with hunger, I want to show them how to feed themselves. So we're turning that whole thing into a Freedom Farm Academy. And then um, Dr. Uh, Glenn... Uh, chance said, why don't you come to the university and let's put a Freedom Farm Academy at the university. And then another fella, uh, his name was Kyle, he said, I'm, he's the town media guy. So he wants to shine a light on it through the media lens. And all these people, was, it, immediately when we shared the idea, all these people are coming together in that community and we're going to collaborate between the university and the food bank and then all of these different energy systems in the town, and we're going to inspire that town and empower that town to grow food. So that's the permaculture design philosophy kind of at the, at the, at the kind of big oversight level. And then it's a matter of getting into the ground. Um, so I am so excited to have Theo and, and Kira on the call today because you've been doing this and building community for a long time, haven't you? Well, we sure have. Yes, our uh, our farm model and our approach to this, we, we first of all, we came at farming after, you know, I was a technology guy in the 80s and 90s, had a software localization company, sold it um, in the 90s and was consulting. But during the 90s, my children had these serious health issues and I'd been raised as a farmer and by the... Uh, or I'd been raised on a small farm, worked for a bunch of farmers around me at the time. And so we um, kind of came to a realization around um, 2010 that there was a war on humanity happening, a war on human potential. And um, we, had kinda, we had traced a lot of the health issues, serious health issues, cancer. My second son was completely disabled in a wheelchair. And we had traced those, most likely the cause being the pharmaceutical approach and the birthing industry uh, takeover by the pharmaceutical industry and all that stuff. Uh, and we had moved more toward a kind of natural approach in our home. And we translated that into the, we, we had gotten a milk cow because Kira had been processed milk intolerant. We. Uh, people say lactose intolerant, but we call it processed milk intolerant. I, I, I call um, it that I, I couldn't drink milk for 40 years Yeah. until and, we bought a milk cow. Yeah. And, yeah. We, we found and it out, healed my gut within six months. Yeah, we found, found out she could drink raw milk. And that was kind of one of the like um, 
one of the questions that comes into your mind is, well, why didn't we know about this? You know, why didn't, what, what, what happened that got us so disconnected from the truth? We can drink raw milk from a, from our own cow. We can drink it from other cows, but we can't, you know, in her case, she couldn't drink it from the store. I mean, it was a serious uh, digestive upset that she would uh, have. So, um, so then we, uh, we started, when we got a cow, she started with, uh, producing like five gallons a day when she had her calf and and then we started sharing it and then you start building community because you you're sharing the milk from your porch the people are showing up you're all sharing information and our uh, I think our level of knowledge started going up um, and uh, so we came at uh, farming really from serious health issues uh, and then what happens if we remove all that and we remove all the pharmaceuticals and we, and that was our approach with farming. So we, wow. we took this stance early on of like, well, we're not giving, you know, our, uh, our daughter uh, moved in with us and we had our first, she had her first grandchild in our home. She had it in, uh, she followed a vitamin C protocol that um, we found out about uh, a few years earlier. It was called the vitamin C baby pioneered in the 1940s and 1950s, but, you know, we didn't have access to that knowledge in the 70s. That, and so we uh, we saw the results. Her, her first birth was just this fairly easy process in the bathtub in the house. Yeah, it was absolutely and, divine and it changed our lives. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, thank you Sonia. Yeah. And that, uh, that uh, and she named her child Helios. Um, and he had, he never went to a doctor. I mean, he's, I don't think he's 12 and I don't think he's ever been to a doctor, never got any vaccines. And he's this super high, you know, full potential being. And so all of those kind of experiences kept reinforcing, look, we have to recover potential and our fur, you know, so we had calves and we were like, we're not doing any of these vaccines. We're not doing these pharmaceuticals. We took this anti-vaccine stance early on, but there were a lot of people that didn't want us to talk about that because it's right. such a, um, such a, uh, uh, it Touchy. was such a sacred cow, yeah. you know, you, oh, you have to get these, oh, the whole entire farming and agricultural livestock industry is just all about the pharmaceuticals on the shelf and the vaccines. And, yeah. and we said, no, nah, we're not doing any of that. And we stumbled on the Nobel level you know, science that Linus Pauling kept uh, trying to get to people, partly because of uh, along with Sonia's birth, the vitamin C baby, high dosing vitamin C. I'd been doing, uh, I had this practice of doing hot yoga and I started um, high dosing vitamin C about three or four years into it. And my flexibility and pain and all that stuff just like went away. And I was like, this is really provable amazing information that's been kind of suppressed along with all this other stuff. So that all sums up to this like war on humanity, you know, war on human potential. One of our first milkers, when we started the farm, we moved to from our one acre in Corvallis to this 160 acres in Yonkala, Oregon. Uh, after we kind of like had this revelation, we we're like, well, we're going to do this and we're going to build community as mm -hmm. best we can nothing to lose. My second son had died at that point uh, in, a, in kind of a broken body. And so it was like, we're going to, you know, pour. I was like in my 50s and I'd learn all this health information. So I said, well, I'm probably going to live to be 120 now. So I'll just go into farming and we'll just do this for a long time. And Wow. Yeah. That's, oh, that's so amazing. And you've created <laughs> structures. I mean, you've got the moolah coin, you've got the structure that's scalable. And that's right. one of the many reasons I'm so excited that we're chatting and that we're collaborating because we want to shine a light on your structures and how they can scale and integrate into the whole freedom network. Right. So um, we had a, because we had this mission, essentially, we, we started with the mission of we're going to decentralize the food system, because if we do that, we'll basically uh, push the whole pharmaceutical industry aside. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it's, it's not necessary. 
And uh, we had, um, like I said, we, we had really studied and poured into the orthomolecular science and that's nutrient based science. And then along the way, just starting out, we, we always use like our tea dip was like fermented milk. And so we're using microbes and we're using enzymes and that there's all this science around that just says, Very hey, good science behind that. This is so much better than any commercial. If you just take the raw milk, ferment it, and then use that to re-inoculate the teats at the end of the milking, that's so much more powerful than any of these commercial teat dips that you get. Yeah. And so orthomolecular science and microbiome science became the whole uh, basis of our farm, uh, the way that we work. And it, as time has gone on, we've become more and more knowledgeable about how to implement that science on land and in you know, and we talk about restoring an uh, a microbiome balance as if it was got the Garden of Eden essentially. And so we've got the microbiome balance in the in the soil, in the water, in the air of the farm. All, all that contributes to health. And what happens is if you balance that out, then you eliminate disease. You just eliminate it. And wow. so. I can talk more about that, but basically we based the, the way that we treat animals with nutrients, high dose vitamin C. And, uh, I write for the orthomolecular, uh, orthomolecular.org. I I've submitted, it's a peer reviewed body of science. So you come to the realization that, that, Hey, there's this whole parallel science that you can base a parallel economy on and eliminate all the uh, kind of lies or absolute lies, or at least the framework, you know, that is mainstream, mainstream pharmaceutical industry. We don't need that. We can go back a couple hundred years. We can add this advanced science, nutrient science, microbiome science. Those are the, those are the things that make us thrive. And most of the diseases can be traced to imbalances in all in those two uh, sciences. So right. if you balance microbiome science, you eliminate the microbiome ba- imbalance diseases like cows, one of the most popular, um, or yeah, one of the most common vaccines is called the seven way mm. vaccine. And if you look at all those diseases, they're all caused by clostridial overgrowth. Yeah. So glyphosate, um, in the feed is one thing that disrupts that it knocks out one of the microbes that controls the clostridial organisms and then it also causes probably inflammation and and anaerobic pockets in the gut so these anaerobic um, bacteria can sprout and all of a sudden you have these overgrowth diseases and that's more of a pesticide and uh, it's more of a chemical disruption that we've imposed by coming up with some invention and then the disease starts happening a few years later. And then we come up, you know, then the same companies that come out with the company, the, the chemical that creates the disruption are, are in line to produce the vaccines that, you know, are supposed to address that disruption. And so it's, it's a process on your farm, but it's a, it's a possibility over several years when you eliminate those interventions and focus on tuning the microbiome you eliminate those diseases yep and for anyone who's not familiar based on what you said there we have uh monsanto and their flagship product roundup now owned by the pharmaceutical giant bear bear so they're involved in producing the food they're involved in the food that goes to the livestock and then from there um fixing that problem once we all have diseases Right. Right. Exactly. So we we often say that the land of milk and honey was not pasteurized. <laughs> and I heard that. Right. <laughs> it's so it's so true. And uh, you know people are using uh, uh, their bleach. Uh, they're they're really killing their microbiome. Um, I'm sure you've seen that and have educated so much about that. Um, with regard to the, the plants you're putting in, the soils, they're going in. I, I'm sure you have some kind of follow-up 
how do I fertilize these plants? How do I keep them healthy when people, you know, we, we can't even walk down the aisle in, uh, in Home Depot or, or any of these garden centers. Uh, it's, it's toxic. We, we yeah. can't even do that. I mean, you must be handling that in some way as well. Multiple ways. So on our land, we have electroculture. We have these um, contraptions, which I don't really understand how they work, but they help balance the atmosphere. We have analemma water and compost tea and worm castings yeah. and humigenics. Yeah. So we layer all of these different mm -hmm. things. And the number one thing, we're even putting some mycelial network um, kind of catalysts into our farm, into our land. So yeah. some spores that communicate and help strengthen the plants. So yes. we're doing kind of all layers of it, and that's all part of our permaculture design process. Right. Absolutely. Well, we've got to not only do these plantings, we've got to bring the nutrition back yeah. to the soil so that the minerals and everything magical, that, that divine that God put in there is then in the plant and then in your body and then try to keep the things out that are destroying uh, that beautiful dance of uh, your your gut, uh, guard, the garden in your gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, we were talking earlier before we started recording about there's a lot of people out there protesting what's going on in different ways. And we talked about the best way to protest is what? Mm -hmm. Well, the way uh, I often describe it is like, there's people who are going to go out with their signs and they're going to get together and protest. And, you know, we're, we're just not the folks that are going to go out and stand in front of a tank. I often say, although I really respect the people who are so fired up that they want to go let their voices be heard. Uh, we're not going to go out there and do that. We're going to gather that community and we're going to feed people. Yeah. Um, that's, that's probably the most powerful thing I can think of doing is not just, you know, here's a plate for you and here's a plate for you. No, we've got to bring that whole community together. Um, and, the action items there is the, it's boots on the ground. If you have a little space, uh, grow some food. Even, you know, some people say, even if you have a little patio garden, just grow something. Um, and then there's people like, um, uh, Lee, is it, honey, uh, honeycut? Honeycut. Or, yeah. Uh, who is doing the suburban stuff and yeah. coordinating neighborhoods. Um, what we're doing is a little bit different. Um, what we're trying to do is put together um, a farm. Like right now we serve somewhere between 250 and 300 families between Roseburg and Portland in Oregon. And, but our farm has the capacity of serving up to a thousand families and we don't want to go over that. You know, there's, there is a limit to that kind of thing, but getting to a thousand families that we're feeding now, what we do from there is we we replicate what we've learned in the last 10 years uh, about how to grow this food, how to train these interns that come in, and bring the food to people at private drop sites, um, and then so duplicate this model yes. all over the country as fast as we can right. uh, because people need this food and they need to not eat bugs. They, I mean, unless they really want to, but let's <laughs> let's not say that everybody's going to be eating the bugs. Um, and, it, and if they are, let them be organic bugs. But uh, uh, so if you want to continue to have um, God's divine nutrition, then you need to find a farm that is doing what we're doing exactly or help us do uh, what we're trying to spread out there and, and involve Everyone, everyone's calling us now saying, where's the farm in our area? And we're like, not yet. Soon. Yeah. Soon. That's now, the opportunity of a lifetime for those right. people who want that. Start it, build right. it, and they will come and we'll help. We'll design right. all of these different pieces of the puzzle in yes. the farm. Yes. And then it can scale. And that's what we need. And I was talking to Joel Salton. He said, we don't need a thousand more, a thousand acre farmers. We no. need 
50,000 more 100 acre farm. Yes. He's got it. He, That's he's exactly. He's saying the same thing that we are. And yeah. So our, our farm model starts <laughs> with raw milk as right. the centerpiece. Awesome. And raw milk is our birthright food. People yeah. don't, people aren't, you know, they're kind of disconnected from that, but everybody starts out on raw milk. Yeah, ideally, they're, right. they're breastfed. That's God's design. Um, that's God's design, colostrum, raw milk. Right. When a calf is born, it, you know, runs over to its mother, grabs onto its dirty udder, gets a mouth of poo, which is a sampling of the microbiome of the whole herd. And then the milk has this God-given built-in intelligence. intelligence. People call it probiotic, prebiotics, but it's probiotic uh, activities. And that means it nourishes beneficial microbes and it doesn't nourish. So it, it works with positive energy, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I want you to be alive and I'm going to ignore you. And it does that in the gut. So the guts of newborn mammals, humans, calves, pigs, everything, they're wide open for microbial life. And the raw milk coming in is what the mother's information is being passed on that says, we need this microbe here in the, in the you know, small intestine, this microbe at this location. And it sorts those microbes and gets them inoculated along the way so that you have all the microbes needed to uptake uh, minerals. You know, there's key yes. microbes needed. Right. You start studying microbiome science, this is all being revealed, right? Yeah. You have your gut microbes that are metabolizing iron for you. So if you don't have those microbes, you're anemic all your life right. or you're, you're not vitamin processing piece. iron well. Yeah. So that process has been, it just seems like if you look at pharmaceuticals there, the whole design is to disrupt that process early on. Vaccines, you know, and, 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 and to treat the sim the symptoms of when they're absent, right? Instead of just giving what's absent, it treats the symptoms uh, of of everything that comes up when they're absent. And so, our focus in on our farm for ten years has been let's not disrupt the the, nat the natural ways. Let's right. let those calves, you know, nurse and make sure that they get milk from the herd, raw milk from the herd. Yeah. Any baby that's born here is taught, the mothers are taught about vitamin C babies. Mm -hmm. We have babies born on the farm. People come here mm -hmm. and uh, birth their babies here and they, they're vitamin C babies. And then, they, you know, the first, we had a baby here um, in last May and her, the mother it's had her a, birthday today. Oh yeah, that's true. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Katya. So Katya. Katya was born here a year ago. She's a beautiful baby. Oh and yeah. her her mother um, had come here just to have her baby. And uh, through a variety of things, she needed to run to the hospital that day after the baby was born. Mm -hmm. So the baby stayed here with the father and we just gave her colostrum from the cow and raw milk from the cow. And right. that was the way that this little girl got started. And there's been several babies in our, um, in our farm share, uh, community that the mothers can't nurse for some reason or another and they get raw milk from the cow instead and that's been a, that's really uh historically uh been why the family or one of the benefits of having a family cow around is that if the mom had a baby she, that baby could be raised on raw cow milk and and it it has all the same kind of activities that's so, so cool Oh my gosh. Everything you're saying is just based in nature's law, God's law. Right. It's That's right. So simple, but right. yet we've been coerced and manipulated and lied to and for centuries. Believe yeah. the lies. So now right. you're operating in a little different way, right? You're not operating as a standard um, corporation, is that right? Yeah, so we um so I want to continue with our farm model. We have the Centerpiece is the on-farm raw dairy, mm -hmm. and we deliver milk to association members. So mm -hmm. the pri we, we run as a private association, mm -hmm. which is analogous to like a, a drinking. A, it, it, there's these dry counties in Texas where it's illegal to sell alcohol, but they in those it, it's uh, in those counties for years. Ever since that happened, they just create these private. Uh, clubs and people come through the door join the private club and then they can uh, drink alcohol so 
um, that that legal lawful structure has been in place and it's been uh, it's there's a lot of large organizations even the, that uh, have just kind of shown that this this all works and we follow that we understand it created a private association it's about documentation it's about how you do your meeting minutes and all those kinds of things to, around this uh, this entity that you create and we also created a church uh, and the church in our in our structure is going to be the underlying perpetual landowner of these farms that come up so and, leather layer um, protection and keeping people um, keeping the state and federal uh, really illegitimate uh, entities from interfering with your community and your food source. Yeah. So the centerpiece is the raw dairy, and then we have an on-farm butchery. And so all the animals uh, are harvested here for meat. Um, yeah. And uh, that's so on-farm dairy and on-farm butchery. So now we're raising hogs on the land mm -hmm. and the hogs are drinking skim milk from our cream process or fermented skim milk and so every animal benefits from the milk that's on the farm and what happens by doing that is you start tuning the entire farm microbiome into a, a mammal a favor a balance that's favorable to mammals yeah. and and it happens over probably three or four years where you start moving the soil um, is benefiting because the yeah. pigs are eating this fermented milk and then they're distributing their manures around the cows love to go where the pigs have been uh, the previous year and they're eating the grass and their microbiome is being retuned and so right. over time that balance gets restored and it's wow. not very you know we think in terms of generations but a generation for a cow is like three years and a generation for a pig is like two years, you know, so you're cycling this around and around quickly uh, to where each generation benefits. They have that open period, that self-completion period as an infant, and then their microbiome becomes more balanced and they distribute a better balance in the microbiome. And so the animals, and in our view, the livestock are the, the key and our relationship to the livestock are such a powerful force in covering huge acres of land with with this restoration process. raising the fertility and uh you know we've seen that over the last 10 years the fertility has just exploded wow. uh with all of this activity and of course the chickens uh come by and and they clean everything up and and uh they add their all of their own stuff too so we're not seeing out of balance parasitic activity. We're not seeing diseases. Um, we're just seeing robust animals the way God made them. Oh, I mean, you just everything you're saying is exactly. Uh, oh, no. hey, sorry. <laughs> that was Dr. Daryl Wolf. Um, we're going to be on a show here in a little bit, but everything you're saying is exactly opposite of what. Uh, she's still ringing in. I think Daryl's calling him back. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. He keeps calling back. Um, Matthew, jump on for a sec. I'm going to jump right back in. Sure, yeah. Okay. Well, I can continue uh, oh, well, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we talk about the on-farm dairy as a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. Then we have the on-farm butchery. And there's this integration that starts happening. And in addition to that, we're delivering what weekly to a big, a broad area of private drop points that we yeah. set up. These are mostly residences. There's a few uh, co-ops that set aside space for us. Mm -hmm. And so oper we're operating that whole farm model operates in the private domain and it demands, right. it demands engagement from yeah. the entire community. So yeah. a hundred acre farm can have a thousand association members is our is our goal and then we divide that and right. we go to you know two farms serving two thousand right and, and part and, of doing that we get to take the livestock that we've been raising for the last 10 years that has no vaccines no pharmaceuticals they are clean 
and and born here and raised here, we get to divide those two mm-hmm. and send them to the new farm, along with the interns that we've trained. And uh, I mean, it's just we're we're rolling. I think we can get it off the ground and uh, and really get this out to as many uh, states as we can. Yeah. And there is a scale of that model that's that's uh, that creates wealth. And so um, when when you're running at too small, you know, in for, I think there's an, a, a good example is to look at the government um, statutes in Oregon. They say, hey, if you if raw milk in general is illegal, you can't sell it in Oregon. But if you, yeah, it's you illegal can't, here too. I'm in Canada. Yeah. You can't get it anywhere. Oh right. no, it's a felony there. It's serious there. Yeah, Canada really gone after has it. something going on. In Canada, but in so in Oregon it's illegal. But if you're a farmer and you have two, only two, three cows, and you're milking only two cows, you're allowed to um, you're allowed to sell it from your farm. Well, nobody's going to ever make a living at you know milking two cows and selling the milk from their farm. So there's no business threat there those yeah. statutes are imposed and so what our financial modeling showed welcome back <laughs> Thank our, you. Fin- our financial modeling shows that it, you have to hit a certain scale and then everybody on the farm becomes uh their livelihood comes from the farm everyone is working the farm and you're distributing to this community of a thousand people who who are doing their work but they're also coming to visit the farm they're coming to harvest their meat and you know see how the meat is Mm -hmm. raised and connect with the animals and our milk is delivered as what we call single moo milk which means that's a a kind of a play on single malt whiskey but it means that that single moo milk means you get a jar of milk and the name of the cow that produced the milk is on the bottle So all the cows have names and we label it with the cow name and the date and the time that it's milked. And so So it's not like the, uh, the stuff we're buying at the store that's got maybe a drip from a few thousand cows in it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's a massive combination. Yeah. Right. One cow. So it's traceable back to one cow and wow. uh, And that process is surprisingly scalable. You know, they had these old milking machines with, that we use called surge milkers. We milk the cow, we hand it off to our pourer, it gets into the jars, it gets cooled in the jar. All that stuff is part of the design of what we were doing, but it's also very scalable because you are you don't have a truck and you don't have a processing plant. You just throw it in your delivery vehicle the next day or and you put it on people's tables within two or three days and they're getting fresh milk and they're getting them, you know, the benefits of that raw milk uh, are coming. If they're living in a city in an apartment, it they're bringing that farm uh, microbial intelligence right into their table and right. serving it up to their children. So why is raw milk controversial? <sighs> so there's a, a really good book which is called the untold story of milk. Yeah. And Ron Schmidt. If you look at the agenda, I think if you look at the agenda as being one of separation, right? They want to separate us from God. They want to separate us from nature. They want to separate us from, so who they are, of course, we can all speculate on that, but the, if, if you understand the agenda as one of separation at some point in the late 1800s we started being moved into cities people gave up their family cows but still cherished the milk so in new york city the the distillery started um putting cows in the basement to yeah. to eat the spent grain from the distillery yeah. process wow and uh and they, they hired the sunshine inexpensive immigrants to uh or immigrant labor and all, all these diseases were attributed to raw milk, but they, they were, were actually real. attributed to uh, the dirty uh, conditions, sick, the sick, sick cows, cows that were that didn't have access to daylight. Yeah. So the beginning of the the CAFO really was the dairy industry moving into this into these distilleries. Right, in the and city. so and the rest of that story is 
Uh, New York City, for example, really did have a 50% infant mortality rate because that milk it was called swill milk was way cheaper uh, to buy from these you know, horrible distillery dairies uh, than the country milk, which was so, so good. No one in the country with a cow drinking raw milk was getting sick. Right. Um, but the kids in the city were. They really were. It was very bad. And they were like, how do we solve this problem? Well, Louis Pasteur had just saved a bunch of uh, 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 wine that had gone bad and was making people sick and it was unsaleable. So they're in France. And he just said, well, boil it. And uh, they did, and uh, the wine was just garbage, but at least it wasn't making people sick, and they uh, they sold it all and saved that deal. And so when uh, New York City heard about that, they said, well, uh, bring that guy here to solve our problem. So they brought in Louis Pasteur, right. and he said, well, boil it. <laughs> and so, and then the infant mortality uh, basically went away. Other kinds of issues came up big time, but not a big deal, not compared to what they were at. So instead of changing the environment for the cows and not feeding them grain, the spent grain, um, they decided to boil it instead. Uh, so no improvement for the cows. And there really isn't any improvement for the cows now um, in those big CAFO dairies. So same deal. Don't don't change the conditions. Uh, just treat uh, the the symptoms. Right. And and that's that. But again, I couldn't drink milk for 40 years because of what they're doing and because of the, the gut damage from all of the environmental toxins, including uh, dairy. So... I mean, that's kind of that story. If you want to read more, it's a fascinating book. Ron Schmid uh, wrote that book, and you can find it. It's The Untold Story of Milk, and it's fascinating. He's a Canadian, wow. too, I think, Ron Schmid. Oh, okay. So, I think he was, yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Now you guys you guys have some serious issues. One of my great heroes in Canada is Michael Schmidt. You might know him from Glen Colton Farms in Ontario, I think. Um, what a hero. He was uh, persecuted for uh, 30 some odd years. Excellent story. Raided over and over. Uh, the Crown just made it their uh, personal agenda to take that guy down. Uh, but now he's doing symphonies in the barn. Uh, check him out. Glen Colton Farms. That's awesome. Yes, Matthew, let's put that before we're done in the, uh, in the chat or somewhere. That sounds like a great story. It, it's all the same story. When we look at all the different things going on right now, it's like we're in this battle between good versus evil or something. It is. Yeah. It is. It's absolutely, it's absolutely that. Yeah. yeah. And we've been in that battle, and the, and it, and we've been in it since Babylon, really, if yeah. you, if you start, become a like we have. So we started out very scientific. You know, I've got a degree in engineering physics and kind of new age uh, religion type stuff, and then – as time has gone on, I'm like, Not anymore. Whoa, this is this uh, this the results on our farm. They just pull you more and more toward Jesus, towards the biblical Scripture. explanation of the way the world is. And so we show that uh, to the interns that come to our farm. We tell them, "Hey, we're a Christian farm. We listen to you know these really fun sermons while we're milking cows, and the cows love to hear the latest, you know." And so we. We do that. We listen, we have a, a community building aspect. And one of the things that we've come to recognize is on these farms, there has to be this like common moral framework. There has to be, if you're going to be living together and working together this intensely, then you really have to build that um, framework around truth. And mm -hmm. we find that right. the truth is pretty uh, incontestable. It comes out of the Bible if it's taught right. And so that framework of the people that work here, we're a ministry, our PMAs are a ministry in that they, they're they demonstrating what food tastes like if it comes out of the Garden of Eden. And so people get blown away. And it's like, it's a way, I think, to attract people into uh, additional truths, scripture. Right. And, you know, uh, and so anyway, it is, uh, 
it, it you know all the way back to Genesis, God says, "Be fruitful and multiply, take dominion." That means manage these this creation be, in a beautiful way, as if you were following the master. I made you in my image. I am the master. Follow the design. Follow the design of what I did. And so, if you go into a cabinet shop working for this master cabinet maker, and you're like, you know, brand new into the cabinet shop. You're not going to go in there and say, "Oh, the, I could do that better, and I can do that better." And that's, where's the particle board? Yeah, that, right. That's that's the way that man man has approached it in the last couple of centuries. Like, well, we can do this thing better, and we can do this and that, and yeah. then we create all these disruptions, create all these diseases, and then profit, you know, is comes out of those diseases. And it's like, right. wait a minute, we're not following God's tonight. We're not listening. You know, be yeah. fruitful and multiply take dominion that those are pretty clear and then uh subdue the earth subdue there's evil here there's evil in the garden work to subdue that work to create a life that you know and that's what the bible to me is all about is like the design for a happy life right you 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 uh man woman that was the design and yeah. and you raise uh, children and you eat good foods and you celebrate, you know, this protocol and, or just the, throughout the year and you always are referencing creation and, and honoring God. That's all about honoring God. And I think that we, um, it, you can't avoid that. Once you get into this, once you start pulling orthomolecular, um, restorative microbiome, seeing all the beauty of the design, it's just like where where did this come from? This you know if you if you're not if you're just a secular thinker, it's like wait a minute, this design is way more than something that could just be randomly put together. Right? Don't yeah. Don't don't try to improve on the divine. Uh, you know. it's, it's ridiculous, it, and it's it's impossible. And from so many perspectives. We don't know why certain seeds germinate because they can sense a particular thing in the soil or in the atmosphere right. that inspires and empowers them to germinate. Right. Let's design it according to its own structures to be the most supportive for our vision. It's like the ultimate building blocks of the Garden of Eden according to how we want our Garden of Eden to look. It's right. like a beautiful thing. Right. Well, one of the things that I'm really excited to talk with you about, do it online, offline, I know we'll be talking a lot with you, is that each one of these farms really must have a culinary garden, a yeah. beautiful setting, um, in addition to uh, the livestock, you know, raising livestock the way we do, pastured and moving on the grass. Is uh, I tell people it's like running Jurassic Park, yeah. and it is, it really is. But to bring in the the beautiful the beautiful herbs and and an, a, a completely edible garden, I'm so excited to do that on every one of these new farms that we put out there, and I'm hoping to work with you on that. Oh, yeah. It's a perfect collaboration because we want to shine a light on what you've shown to be incredibly valuable and useful way to manage the particular aspects or elements of the garden, right, which are the cows. And the, and you, you have the pigs in there. You probably have some chickens in there, right? Right. Yeah. Living system. We bring the food forest element. Right. And then right. we shine your piece of the puzzle within our – it's all one puzzle. We just right. bring exactly. it together. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the microbiome you can look at it a bunch of, as a garden as well. So yeah. you're it, and the animals can be viewed as oh, like absolutely. the fruit of the land, oh, you know, yeah. as well. So this is the garden that we're restoring. Yeah, the whole what, dynamics got to be there, and, including the fungal. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So the other piece of information that we have been shown. You know, we, we look at a lot of this as just inspiration from God. But as yeah. you know, you have these synchronicities. And yeah. at some point I was at a farmer's market and this kind of uh, I think it was probably a marijuana farmer guy came walking by, asked me how we're doing raw milk. And I said, well, we're we, we just use livestock share contracts. So we're operating under contract law. And he said, 
ah, you should be in the private domain, you know? And then I was like, mm, well, I don't know what that is, you know? And, yeah. and then I was on Facebook before they kicked me off and, <laughs> uh, and somebody came in and said, uh, Hey, it sounds like your farm should be operated under the private domain. So I got several different messages. And so that yep. guy would happen to be a consultant doing exactly that. And, uh, and so I worked with him, David Edwards, and he created our first PMA. And that was like in 2018, maybe yeah. before all this insanity happened. Yeah. And, right. uh, and it, it, you know, I was kind of questioning my own sanity, but then as time's gone on, I've, it's become my education in that arena has become very clear to the point where I'm certified now to create additional farms, ministries, and that uh, we realize that yeah. there's all these deceptions, right? So okay. churches were deceived and churches became corporations and then they asked for permission. So we, we tell people stop asking permission. They asked for permission to not have to pay taxes. Well, in the US, that was all built in from the first place. A church can't even be touched by the government. They can't right. be regulated, they can't be taxed. And so the, that is a deception because first they ask permission to be a business. And that, and so you have to get away from that mindset and you start have to start building. In order for us to build a parallel economy like people talk about, we have to build that economy and quit asking permission from the old economy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and right. so um as that whole framework became clearer and clearer to me and i was because i'm a documentation guy that's what i've done all my life that's what my company was about and we started building the documentation you know everybody who has a corporation has a binder and they put their minutes in there and they've got their association articles of association so you you build these these private associations in the same way, except you don't say, oh yeah, we're gonna ask permission or we're gonna hire, you're essentially all those corporations hire the court system in the public realm and the lawyers to resolve disputes for them. Yeah. Whereas in the private domain, you say, here's how we resolve disputes. And you have your own dispute resolution framework and you don't ever reference the state laws of Oregon. You don't ever say, we're gonna follow all those laws and we're gonna be compliant those th that's what corporations do that's what llc's do but we don't do that and we don't ask permission even to be a business because there's that the private domain uh is yeah. what we're all about and we're building a parallel economy that's you know ultimately that's not the primary goal but the ultimate result of that is that it's going to just squish uh, the other economy out of the way and become yeah. the dominant economy instead of going head to head with it we're going just yeah. around that. People are ready for, they're so ready for that right now. And I mean, the, the calls and the, uh, it's so refreshing to talk to people like, yes, finally, everything you said is resonating uh, with me. I want to be involved in some way. Right. And all of these organizations like yours, we all reference uh, Buckminster Fuller, right? You, right. you don't, you right. don't uh, fight, you don't build a new system by, by fighting the existing system. Right. You, you build it by building the new system and obsoleting the old system. Right. Right. And whenever I, you know, happen to look at a video from a, the current criminal organization that that is selling us COVID vaccines and things like that, I'm just like, you know, almost getting sick, get sick to my stomach because it's so, it's so rich with lies. And the fact that there's any people that are believing that at all to me is just like stunning. It's, it, it it's, is. And that's and I, why I, I try not to watch those. Once in a while, yeah. I'll watch a clip of something. Yeah. And I'll just right. go, oh my God, that's still <laughs> out there. It's, it's insane. Yeah. But, yeah. but that, that's our opportunity. And I, I, I'm yeah. so glad that we're connected. Um, I've got a, another call here that I, a, a, a live show that I've got to jump on here in a couple of okay. minutes. But I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you're doing, everything that you're about. And I, I'm very glad that we're connected. And I want to really shine a light on what you're doing to the best of our Fantastic. Ability. And we do with you as well. So let's collaborate more offline. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again soon. Yes, for sure. And I'm always accessible. You can call me anytime. I love inspired ideas. I get these calls all the time. Jim, I just had an idea. 
and and somehow there's magic going on, right? Yes. And so those ideas, right. oftentimes, they fit right in somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And you can reach us. You've got it there, heliosfarms.com. Um, you can, and we'll talk about Moolacoin another time. But it's a fantastic way to get to out of the uh, fiat uh, currency yeah. that's crashing and not controlled uh, by the people who, you know, should be involved in it. That's exactly right. Well, thank you so much, my friends. Um, anything else you'd like to say about where to find you? I think the, the heliosfarms.com. And anything else you'd like to share real quick? Well, that's the easiest way to get a hold okay. of us yeah. and help us in what we're doing. Anybody out there who's inspired to help these movements forward, please do contact us. We've got lots of different ways of getting involved. Um, get involved. If you're in Oregon, come visit us. Um, if you're around the country and you want to see farms like this, um, in addition to uh, the food forest uh, uh, abundance, uh, all coming together and putting this near you, contact us at how you can help investors who want to uh, you take their fiat currency, which is crashing, um, and put it in something awesome. Uh, call us. We have investment opportunities uh, there, too. Pretty innovative stuff. And uh, we're just looking forward to meeting you all. Awesome. All right. You have a great day. Go ahead, Matthew. I just said it was outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's yeah. been a real honor. And we want to we want to get one of the um, food forests going here. Yes, so, we do. Uh, we have a lot of acreage and we have a beautiful Love. orchard that could be. Yeah, You've already got a Freedom Farm Academy minus just a couple elements, and we'll help right. you design those in, and yep. then we'll scale it, and we'll change the world, because why not? Yes, we will. That's exactly right. Thank That's you so much. All right. Yeah, I think we should have a couple strategy session calls together between, between us. There's yep. definitely significant alignment here, and a lot of what the model you brought forth with the moolah coin and the replication of drop sites. All of these things are very yes. critical strategic pieces that are important. Yep. Right. Our intention, just like yours, although we don't broadcast this kind of first and foremost when people hear about us, but it's what we're really doing is build a localized and decentralized food supply. Yes. Yeah. And it yep. and it wouldn't just be, um, you know, the the fifty thousand new hundred acre farms. What we're going after is every suburban backyard. Yes. Yep. Growing a little bit as Absolutely. much as they possibly can. And That's then right. also using those to inspire other people to also take similar action. Absolutely. Because, and those folks are going to need yeah. that. Um, and they're going to need clean, clean pharmaceutical free meat, milk, eggs, Absolutely. reliably. And yes. then, you know, deal and then having the, the, the food forest abundance, uh, uh, culinary garden, beauty, and food right in their own, right next to their kitchen. Yeah, yeah. I think there's lots of there's lots of mo uh, models like for how this decentralization is going to happen. Absolutely. And so we have this we have this one that we know it has to run at a certain scale in order to support the delivery network and in order yeah. to you know deliver the the milk at the level that we deliver it and and to train the people and then replicate it. And you replicate it, bring it to scale again, replicate it, bring it to scale again. And then if you have a thousand of these farms around a populous area like Portland, then everybody has a home farm that they can go out to. They're bringing the microbiome into their environment, all that mm -hmm. stuff. It, you know, that's kind of the way that, that our model works. But all the food for us, you know, I mean, the abundance is in, is crazy when when you start getting into it. It's just this like kind of shocking how much food you can raise and how uh, how beautiful it all comes together. What are, what are the things do you produce on the farm? Like, so you've got your livestock, right? right? Yeah. So we've got milk. the right. So we've got the butchery. Um, we're we're just getting ready to do the creamery, so we'll have. Uh, cheese, and uh, we've got all kinds of different dairy products that we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, fermented dairy products that, that you can imagine. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah. we're so we have pork, we have we raise hogs, uh, we butcher the hogs and uh, do pork, and we have a charcuterie here, so we're smoking the hams 
we do all that with no um you know nitrates and nitrites right, right. um and so and people you know in come and harvest their uh their animals here we do tallow a lard butter all those products that are super healthy in terms of cooking oils right. butter uh ghee mm -hmm. and so most of our focus is is uh, livestock um the dairy dairy products um beet uh the butchery and then the butchery products you know that's the primary focus that we're dealing right. with um i did make a, an error earlier when i spoke i said lee honeycutt it's zen honeycutt, yeah, zen honeycutt and yeah. uh we we uh she she attended a um virtually attended a, a, a festival that we did yeah. last year and her depth of knowledge on um uh the 5g in particular so she's got uh moms across america if you want to learn more about uh how to how to deal with the 5g in your neighborhood wow um really powerful stuff there yeah we have an incredible group that we're working with uh their essential energy is more the personal company and then they have a larger side that does things for large agricultural spaces so yeah, yeah. hundreds of acres uh, oh right yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm interested in all these amazing connections. Yeah, the har harmonics are are pretty powerful. Yeah, from what we're, I mean, both for human health, but also plant health. Everything. And all that, yeah, that yeah. stuff is. Yeah, absolutely. There's an incredible there. book called "The Invisible Rainbow," mm -hmm. that is all about how, as we began to electrify, what happened. It goes mm -hmm. through the history of electricity. Oh, wow. And uh, it's fascinating, actually. Oh, I'm some... really excited to hear more about that. Remarkable links to diabetes, heart disease, cancer. Um, right. You know, yeah. you talk about sanitation earlier with the cows and how that impacted raw milk. Right. And it's the same same story in a flipped way with even most of our disease and mm -hmm. how they were, how we've been told they've been eliminated through the use of big pharma and their favorite product, the one that has no safety testing requirements, the one right. that's protected everywhere, right? We all know the one, right. how really what changed prior to those things all coming out was sanitation. Right. And right, sanitation of course. was the game changer. We yes. stopped pooping where we ate our food. So right. people started to feel better. And right. I mean, obviously I'm over-exaggerating that. Yeah. But right. the, the simplicity is we stopped being living in filth. And right. we started doing things in a different way, cleaning our hand, you know, soaps became to be a thing. And right. um, coincided with that was a drastic decline in these diseases. Right. Right. The other things right. that we stopped doing, for example, is spraying DDT on every kid oh and every gosh. plant right. and everything. So all of a sudden, the the nerve disease called polio right. vanished. Right. 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 So there's been so many of these stories that just so conveniently fit into the narrative of this space. Pharma is all tied into obviously chemical. Oil and gas, right? The, the right. chemicals from oil and gas are turning into pharma products to keep yeah. us well and on and on. Right. Right. And, and all these things are just causing tremendous harm, but they've yeah. done such a good job of building these walls around their stories right. and that anybody who disagrees with what they have to say has to be canceled and labeled something, conspiracy right. theorist or whatever it is, right? right? In order for that lie to perpetually go on. Right. right. And there's a book I would uh, strongly recommend that really hits everything you're talking about. You may have read it. It's Dissolving Illusions yeah, by so Dr. Heavy. Suzanne uh, Humphreys, who was actually uh, here at the farm uh, oh, uh, along with uh, Polly Tommy and uh, the Vax bus actually yeah. came to our farm. And that yeah. was just an amazing divine meeting and uh i read her book i i absolutely uh love everything um about what she did because it is so well referenced she's so careful 
um, that it you cannot refute what's in there. She uses the government's own data. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah. I highly recommend that book. Absolutely. I do too. And, and Definitely recommend things, it. Yeah, these things are, are things that you can prove, like uh, yeah. tetanus, the, the, the disease that's called tetanus, right? Um, every that's one that everybody gets goes in and it, you have a cut in the emergency room gives you an, a, an injection that actually has four different <clears throat> diseases supposedly three. in it. three what is it DP? Uh, it's uh diphtheria tetanus and acellular pertussis yeah and so you're not getting a tetanus shot you're getting no. the uh, you're getting Which three vaccines at once and right. um and then but the answer, the true answer is to actually just educate people about what causes tetanus right. and what the conditions are. It's really and hard to get people, tetanus. And teach people to, to treat a wound or like if you're dealing with animals, we, yeah. we, we you know, banned um, the calves to castrate them. And you can ban them in a way that potentially creates an environment where tetanus or you can ban them. And in a way that there's never going to form tetanus. And right. So just, and it can be, you know, it's just like an eighth of an inch difference. And so you, you have to understand that. Why not teach the children? Why not teach people, Hey, this is what creates a bad situation. And, and if you're high dosing vitamin C, you're not going to ever get tetanus. If you're, um, uh, and if you do things correctly, if you treat a wound, just cl clean your wound correctly, you're never going to get tetanus. You know, right. if you put vitamin C on the wound, you're not going to get tetanus. Right. So it's just simple preventative things that people should learn as they're growing up. It's like, oh, wow, I just stabbed a nail in my hand. I need to make sure I rub vitamin C on my finger or something like that. That prevents tetanus. Well, honey. And yeah, and honey, things that, yeah. that oxygenate that right. wound because it's an anaerobic bacteria. All those, those three, pertussis, diphtheria, those are all anaerobic things so your body typically is rich in oxygen and it shouldn't have these damaged pockets that right. where these things can form and you can also studying the diseases and what actually causes them allows them to grow is a lot and then preventing those causes is right a lot and that prevents the fear that them. drives people um to leave their own common sense and run to some authority um, yeah. who can only dispense uh, what they've been told to dispense. So, yes. so we've got to get back to common sense. And I think that that's part of building the community is making sure that everybody's up to speed on, on these basic common sense things that our grandmas all used to know, right? Mm -hmm. So be the grandma who knows. Right now. Yeah, the, the challenge, and I'm not saying this that we can't overcome it because we, we absolutely can. I think yeah. the challenge most people face today is that they're ripped away from their moms very early yeah. in their life and their yeah. parents. So they lose yeah. that influence because they got to go back to work, right? Mom and dad got to go back to work to That's buy right. the food, to buy the stuff. So you're <sighs> six months old, you got to go to the hands of daycare. Right. And daycare is yeah. not teaching you the same way. No. And right. And then, as you talked about earlier, even right from the system around childbirth, the amount of fear perpetuated there. So moms right. are getting injections prior to having the baby. Right. Uh, yeah. As soon as they have the baby, they're getting more. So is the baby. Yeah. And, on, and right. Yeah. So you you've got this a mountain of fear hidden right. by this web of lies. Right feeding yeah. these big interests who are gaining more and more power over our governments who are right. making choices, right. To put more boxes around us. Right. So it's putting, it's putting us in a position where we just got to simplify. We got to go gotta get out of the box. Right. So imagine this. So, so if we can visualize this, a farm near you, a farm reasonably near you, everyone who's listening near you um, that has the dairy centerpiece that has the on-farm butchers, clean animals that has the chickens, the eggs and has open doors. So you can come roll around in their microbiome, learn how to make cheese, watch your, your, your animals being, uh, you know, uh, a, a cut for the way that you portion out your meals, but also imagine that same farm that has a schoolhouse, a chapel on it, 
um, a birthing center, right? So now we can worship, we can get baptized, we can hear a sermon, we can learn scripture, you know, we can uh, join each other here, we can we can bring in people who know deeply about certain subjects and do the homeschool, collaborate with your community, right? And then, uh, you know, bringing all of that together with every single farm, imagine the power of that for the community where they're going to drive past Costco. They don't need it anymore. Okay. They're going to go to the farm and they're going to learn about this and they're going to learn about healing herbs because they're right there on the farm outside their kitchen learning all these learning how to do this in their own backyards too i i'm just this is the vision and we we just got to get it out there as soon as, as, soon yeah, as we're we can. so we're so in line you know for us we've set up 15 freedom farm academies which are <sighs> doing what you're talking about it's yes. all the things are just the difference right out of the gate is our centerpiece is not the raw milk. Our centerpiece right. is the permaculture food forest. Exactly. But the concept is identical. Right. It is. And that's exactly what we're not doing is what you're doing because running the two things, uh, we have to run one thing yeah. and really, really well, yeah. but incorporate this. So excited about yeah. working with you to figure out how to do that. Yeah. I think it's simpler than we think it is. I think it is. Yes, the, the simple answer is always as long as you don't get the right bogged way. down. You know, get your foot stuck in the other thing that's that, that uh, has been enslaving us. If you just free yourself you and say, "Yeah, I'm it. part of this system now." Not Walk that away system. from it. And that's what we did. Like yeah. with Mula Coin, yeah. we yeah. said, "Yeah, one of the traps there, I think, is is inviting that currency into your private domain." Right. So let's just exchange it you know yeah. in, that's biblical jesus yeah. one of the money changers outside the temple the temple's right. the private domain the public domain is caesar's domain so he he was very upset when the when the you know right. went in and to the meeting. temple and turned over the tables of the money yeah. changers it's like okay well let's get the money changing outside of our domain uh so you change dollars to mula coin right. and then all of our transactions in our private domain the PMA and, and future PMAs will be Moolah coin transactions. So, so many ways that uh, people can come at this to uh, obsolete the system that is, well, you know, trying to exterminate you. Um, <laughs> we might want to think about that. You mean they don't have our best interest in mind? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they don't. That's right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There is definitely some forces at work that are not for humanity to succeed and yeah. thrive and right. capture the abundance that's available for all of us. Right. So as you said, and, and as we think about too, let's just make the old way obsolete, building a Absolutely. better way. Absolutely. Yeah. And let's, turn let's our backs. Let's get together and do it. Right. Just turn our backs on them. Right. right. We can do things peacefully. We don't need to protest. Right. We right. have the solutions. The simplicity is there. Working right. with nature is the logical step because what we've been doing so far is nothing but fighting nature and nature right. is never going to lose. We right. will continue to lose if we fight nature. So let's right. start working with it, do things the right way, collaborate, right? Remove right. the competition. I don't need to have this little patent in order for you not to not have, right? So right. it's just about sharing the knowledge, open source it, simplify, yep. go back to nature, yep. work with that divine knowledge that it has. That's and, right. Uh, we'll, we'll win the spiritual battle. Yeah. God, in the end, God always wins. Yeah. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, it's awesome to speak with you both. I love what you're doing with Helios Farm and I'm very thankful that we're connected. There are tremendous things that I know we can do together. I can right. feel it. I can see it as I read through your web pages. The alignment <laughs> is uncanny. Yeah. And uh, you know, let's get to work. Okay. We, already, we already both are. So now let's just do yep. more of it together. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you again. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. We'll have to do a part two so we can dive into Moolah coin. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. All right. Well, wish you both a wonderful day 
and I look Thank forward you. to uh, talking more. I'll send you another message so we can keep these conversations going um, through email because there definitely is some stuff here that we should get talking about really ASAP. All right. right. Sounds great. All right. Beautiful. Thank okay. you so much. Wish you both an, an amazing honor. day. Thank you. You as well. Bless Thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that conversation. It's been another great one. And wow, what they've got going on there is fantastic. Helios Farms. So we'll play a couple uh, quick ads. One, RA Optics, rawoptics.com slash FFA, rawoptics.com slash FFA is where you can find some really awesome blue blocker glasses, both for daytime as well as evening nighttime usage. These are great. Uh, the ones that I bought are Maxwell daytimes. Jim's got a pair of Maxwell nighttimes and uh, get yourself a pair. If you're sitting in front of a computer or working on the phone a lot, whatever it is, got to protect that site. And these are great ways to do so. Play uh, another quick ad for you here from our friends over at um, Weston A. Price Foundation. Give you a quick ad from them. At Weston A. Price Foundation, we're dedicated to restoring nutrient-dense, farm-fresh foods to the human diet. We look to ancient food and health practices for clues on how to live our healthiest, most vibrant lives today. Join the mission and check out our exclusive membership details at WestonAPrice.org. As a member, you'll receive our quarterly journal on wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts, our annual shopping guide, monthly access to private Q&A sessions with experts, consultations on state laws, regulations, and policies, including food freedom legislation, and so much more. Weston A. Price Foundation. Let's return to wise, traditional foods. All right. Thank you so much. And then the other offering here is the strategy session, 30 minute strategy session. Go get one. It's a chance for you to sit down with a permaculture designer from the Food Forest Abundance team, go through everything that's possible for your own property and have a chance to see how much value permaculture can add to your life. It's no obligation. It's 30 minutes with a professional, and it's an incredible value for you. So head over to foodforestabundance.com, book yourself in that 30-minute strategy session today, and uh, let's get growing some food. Thank you so much for tuning in to another incredible episode of The Jim Gale Show with our friends Theo and Kiera from Helios Farms, and what a special thing they have going on. Go check them out. Helios farms.com wishing you an amazing day this show is officially over